Ordinay, Crafton, and Dillon right here running in the third, fourth, and fifth position. Craft to try to take that third spot back from Horn today. Austin Dillon restarted this race in the 13th spot. Right now running fifth, knocking on the door of third, really. Travis Quapel taking 10th back from Cole Witt on the right side of your screen. It's our longest green flag run of the night. Last time they were on pit road, lap 68. We've already completed 87 laps now with just 80 laps to go. Joey Cole. Coulter right now leading this race. Do you think he's hope, would, would hope it would rain or something maybe? Oh, around goes the 88. Well, Austin 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 Dillon Dillon that got into the back of the 88. And around goes Matt Crafton. Boy, that's not Production. something you see very often is Matt Crafton not finishing one of these races. Just now, you see Matt's on the inside of Ron Hornaday. Austin's going to move to the outside here. Matt's going to move up the racetrack and squeezes Austin. Didn't quite have Austin cleared when he tried to move up the racetrack to follow Hornaday. He got Austin ran into him. He just didn't quite have him cleared. Matt certainly got the worst of that situation. Hits the outside wall as well as the inside wall. There's another view. Watch, watch Matt now. He's going to move up the racetrack. Austin's there. He has his nose there. Just a situation that Austin had already committed to the outside. He was he had some momentum. He was going to go by the 88 of Crafton. Here's Austin's on board. Watch this now. He's going to move to the outside of Matt Crafton in the 88. You saw Austin was up in the top lane there. He really couldn't go up any higher. There's no question. He's he's probably going to be mad at Austin Dillon, and he's going to he's going to make it known right here. He may. Voices displeasure at what just took place. He's walking up the racetrack. The NASCAR official is going to stay with him. You see the arms go up in the air. I got a little bit free off that corner, and I mean, he wasn't there. He like he wasn't there, and then it was like he was just had me right there, and I was trying to get out of the throttle and trying to. I was trying to turn back left, but I was just kind of. I'd gotten free, so I had to walk it up the racetrack. And I mean, but man, when you get hooked in the right rear down the straightaway, that's a, that's a hard way to go down, especially in Texas on the front straightaway here. I mean, this is, I mean, tough deal because I mean this Bernard Chevy was really good. We finally made some really good adjustments on it, and I think we had something for him right there at the end. But it happens. And right now Austin has just moved into the 12th position, and I'm telling you, he will get a top 10 out of this. That's the Ram Tough guts and glory. It's Austin Dillon and that number three team. Steve Arpin slides in front, and Austin Dillon gets caught up in it. Arpin and Dillon break, slide the across break. the grass the in the quad oval. Nothing, nothing Austin could have done about that. Try to keep rolling here. Oh, well, we were just talking about it, head for a top Try 10, to trying to get into the top 10 by passing Steve Arpin. Arpin got sideways right in front of Austin, and he absolutely had nowhere to go. Austin 32 of Steve Arpin. He got loose off the corner, slid up the racetrack. Unfortunately, nowhere for Austin to go. He'd already committed he was going to try to get by the 32 on the inside. Steve came down the racetrack. A lot of front end damage to that three of Austin Dillon. The splitter was torn off when he went into the grass. There's another view. Watch the 32. He's going to slide up the racetrack loose. He has to use some race tech to catch it. See, he's pretty well sideways right here. He may have been able to save that truck had Austin not been there, but Austin was that, had absolutely nowhere else to go. Had the momentum going, looked to go by that 32 on the inside, and then the 32 slides down and collects the three, and into the grass they go. Well, they're side by side. Battle for the third spot. Mayhew has concert the advantage, concert. and the caution concert. comes out with seven laps of racing to go. Wow. A new record for cautions. The 92. Problems for Clay Rogers. Looks like a hard hit to the outside wall with the right front. Yeah, what a tough break for Clay Rogers. Johnny Sauter has led 53 laps. He will lead the most laps. Ron Hornaday running in the second spot. We get started 13th, has worked his way up into the top two and has a great chance of going back to victory two lane. Two by two, they go behind the pace truck. On the inside, it's Hornaday. The outside, Johnny Sauter. Again, Sauter has led the most laps. He's led 55 laps. This is the restart. This is where it could be won or lost right here. 
Coming to the green flag, Johnny Sauter moves down the racetrack before he gets to the start finish line. We've seen this before. They could black flag Johnny Sauter for that move. We saw David Reagan get penalized in the Daytona 500 for doing that exact same thing. He cannot move out of his line until he gets to the start finish line. Johnny Sauter dropped down in front oh, of the 33. The field fanning out behind him. I thought David Mayhew was going to spin out. He was on the inside of Parker Kligerman, completely sideways. There's contact. P.K. Jr. is in the outside wall. He saves it. White flag in the air. Johnny Sauter is leading, but will he be able to hold on to that spot? Where they posted the 13, they black flagged him. They're going to take this win away from Johnny Sauter. We saw it. It was obvious. He was way to the inside before they got to the start finish line. David Mayhew had his hands full with that two behind the 29 of Parker Kligerman. Through turns three and four for the final time. Coming out of turn number four, Johnny Sauter's in front. He's been black flagged. It will be the win for Ron Hornaday. Win number three in Texas. Travis Quapple, hard into job, to head along. Across the stripe, and the trucks continue to try to avoid but Johanna Long and Travis Quapple, hard contact at the start-finish line. A lot of damage to the front of the five truck. You see the steering wheel coming off for Johanna Long. She'll drop the window net. Travis Long, or Tra excuse me, Travis Quapple has taken the steering wheel off of that truck. Wow, what an amazing finish. That's amazing. There's Joe Shear Jr. right there. Cannot believe it. Absolutely cannot believe it. And Phil, you brought up the perfect example. We have seen a win get taken away from someone because they tried to make that move before they got to the start finish line. And this will have some serious implications with the points because more than likely they will move Johnny Sauter back to the last truck on the lead lap. And in this situation, that would be 20 seconds. On Hornaday grabs the checkered flag. It's the third time he's won at Texas Motor Speedway, closing in on Brendan Gaughan. And Todd Bodine. I know how heartbroken Johnny Sauter has to be right now, but they, you know this is the second time we've seen that happen this year. We saw it happen to to David Reagan in the Daytona 500, and the rules are spelled out each week. They remind them you cannot move out of your lane until you get to the start finish line on a restart. did come across the nose of the 33 trucker Ron Hornaday. He's got a lane to race down there. You know, we both spun the tires. It's just whatever, you know. Is you, you going to go meet with NASCAR and try to get an official word from him? Ah, it's official, isn't it? There's the black flag. Checkered flag. He was already posted. Whoa, you heard that. The weaponry comes out in victory lane for Ron Hornaday. He wins the cowboy hats and the celebration once again. It's the third time he's been able to do that in victory lane at Texas Motor Speedway.